I say it falls in line with going back a few shows when I said 90% of IPAs taste the same. Yeah. Bing yep. bong. Yep. That's what the kids say now. Bing bong, right? <laughs> We're live. Let's go. This is the Dos Padres podcast. I'm Major J. That's the Sundance Kid. We're here covering Boston sports and so much more. Another pack show. We're going to another celebration this week. We're going to kick off with. Uh, last week we had Big Poppy. This week we've got the GOAT. Tom Brady announced his retirement from the NFL. So we're going to be doing a special top five Brady moments, Patriots only. Uh, to com- commemorate Brady's career um, and see him off into the sunset. We're going to be welcoming special guest Eric Emmett, uh, Director of Athletics at Golden College, talk some Sox and Bruins. And we're also going to be recapping last weekend's AFC and NFC Championship games. Looking forward to the Super Bowl a little bit. So make sure you stick around for all of that. First off, Sundance, what you what you sipping on? Buy some fine Tazo Zen tea with a touch of honey. How about you, Major J? All right. Uh, I am actually sipping on a uh, Juicy J East Coast IPA from our soon to be friends, undoubtedly Legion friends in beer okay. uh, down in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, this is actually bestowed upon me from friend of the podcast, uh, Lone Star Al. Um, sure. Down in the Carolinas. And it is, uh, I've actually tried it yet. I'm going to now in front of you. This is a live okay. tasting, live in front of, on the air. All right. The palate is fresh. And what say you? I say it falls in line with uh, previous three and out, going back a few shows when I said 90% of IPAs <laughs> taste the same. Yeah. Bing yep. bong. Yep. That's what the kids say now. Bing bong, right? Uh, yeah. This is, uh, this is, it's, it's good. You know, like we've talked about um, on on prior shows, uh, I've really found myself going a little bit more and more to the dark side uh, with with stouts. Um, you want a dark beer? You, you know, the brown ales uh, they 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 tend to be more flavorful. Dark beer, and um, they're not quite as thick as I think they they had been in years past. I think breweries have gotten really good at, you know, distilling those oh, yeah. down just a little bit and making them very flavorful. So I am I am out of the Steve French French toast from uh, a Manchester brewery uh, down here in the Connecticut area that I am going to try and get to uh, Could you repeat after that again, please? Could you please repeat storm. that? What was yeah, that? Yeah, it's a French toast uh, uh, stout and it is tremendous it rivals the cluster nutter peanut butter cup uh stout by uh uh the other fine brewery here in town in new britain uh alvarium Alvarium. so Uh, i might have to put the french toast stout on my list for beers that you need to bring to me i you didn't even have to say it i knew that i'd be picking up two utah get me two if you can tell me what that is referencing, what uh, early 90s movie, you get a prize at the end of the podcast. Utah, get me two. Utah, get me two. All right, so I have the end of the podcast to think it. All right. There you go. Great. All right, let's 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 kick things off with a little rundown. Uh, we've got a number of things coming and going in Boston sports. One of those things is not Major League Baseball, the Red Sox, mm. uh, or the lockout. Not much at all. MLB, <laughs> there's been a little bit of a concession, something to do with uh, lowering bonus pool money for pre-arbitration eligible players, whatever. Um, beyond that, things are getting contentious, supposedly. Sides are getting very – getting are still very apart, according to the athletic. Uh, even saw tonight that MLB actually wants to bring in federal mediators for the labor talks. So that is a great sign. Bodes well for the start of camp. Pitchers and catchers reporting supposedly supposed to be in two weeks. I'm thinking that's not going to happen. We'll be lucky if camp officially even starts on time in March. I'm not holding my breath. We'll we'll see. Um, more to come on that, but not much news uh, on that end. Uh, Bruins, which we'll be talking about a little bit uh, later on in the show. Uh, again, they're eighth in the Eastern Conference, 55 points. By no lack of playing well, just the conference right now is loaded. Um, they are nine points clear of the ninth place team, Detroit. So they're still looking 
very good as far as the playoffs, et cetera. But uh, two and one in the last week. Uh, taking out Arizona on the road, had a nasty, terrible loss to Dallas, six to one last weekend, but they did beat Seattle at home on Tuesday, three to two. Yeah. So we're now heading into the All Star break this weekend. Patrice Bergeron, the lone Bruins All Star, um, mm-hmm. more really pretty much a victim. This team a victim of of just the lack of scoring up until the last few weeks. Uh, David Pasternak Pasta has been on fire the last month. Um, took a rask. Not not playing great uh, since the return overall, and then he actually went out with a lower body injury. So, uh, you know, is it hip-related? Who knows? We don't know for sure, but expected back after the All-Star break. We'll see. But uh, Linus Allmark has been filling in pretty well for the Bs. Uh, between the pipes, uh, Swimman was called up, but has not seen much action there. Bruins coming off the break have Pittsburgh next Tuesday at home. Big game there. Carolina at home next Thursday. And then they've got Ottawa at home next Saturday. So that Pittsburgh game and the Carolina game are both huge against a couple of teams that are playing really well in the East. So then Celtics. Celtics still starting to make some noise, starting to play well. Uh, 28 and 25, still ninth in the East, not making a lot of, of hay in the standings, but they've won five of six, I believe. They've won 10 of 14, 10, 14 exactly. or 10 and four in their last 14. What you're seeing is a lot of those bottom five uh, out of the 10, right? Uh, yeah. Out of the 10, you're seeing a lot of those, the six, seven, eight, nine, 10. You're seeing a lot of those teams start to make some progress right, right. now, uh, but they're not really making a whole lot of progress in the standings per se. You know, those top five teams uh, remain. Um, love what I'm seeing out of the Celtics. Uh, it's much more balanced right now with uh, Smart yeah. and uh, Richardson, uh, these role player guys that are that are having some big games here and there that they absolutely need. And then Jalen Brown's doing his thing. Uh, Tatum has certainly been a, a little bit more consistent lately. Little, Dane, little Dane bit does an consistent. Eastern Conference reserve for tonight. This, this this recording is Thursday night. Tatum was okay. named to the uh, the reserve team. Brown was not. Uh, yep. Again, falling victim to the inconsistency early in the season, but team is officially an all-star now. Uh, but you're right, Smart's back. Team seems like they're putting things together a little bit. They had a so January they went ten and six. January was your month yeah. for this team making a run. Ten and six, I I will I'll I'll, I'll yeah. give that one to you. I mean, yep. you know the thing about the Eastern. We don't need to go too deep into this, but the thing with the East in that conference right now is that there's only about five and a half games separating the top team, the number one seed. And these teams that are in the seven to ten range, um, that right. would be in line for. So that's still a pretty small gap. So that's it, to some extent, that's why this team hasn't been able to make a lot of movement in the standings because these teams are, like right. you said, are so scrunched together. What can you do there? But uh, overall, again, yeah, p- play has been overall play has stepped up. The leaders are leading. Tatum Brown, smart, all, everyone's playing well at this point. See if they can keep it rolling into February. They've got a stretch on the road coming up next week or beginning even this week, tomorrow night, Friday, at Detroit. Uh, then they go to Orlando on Sunday, uh, and then Brooklyn Tuesday. So you've got a, a bit of a stretch on the road against some decent teams. Sure, uh, we'll see what they can. We can see our old friend Kyrie Tuesday night. Fingers crossed. I'm sure there'll be no elbows or fists thrown in that game whatsoever. All love for Brooklyn and Kyrie. Uh, Patriots. A little bit of news there. You may have heard this uh, this guy that used to play for <laughs> the Pats. Uh, his name is Tom. Tom something or other, a very generic name, but he actually retired. Um, so we'll see if the team acknowledges that at all. Uh, bigger news, Josh McDaniels was officially hired as a new head coach in Las Vegas for the Raiders. Vegas! question now is who will be taking over as the OC. Rumor has it uh, Bob, Bill O'Brien might be the next man up if they can work something out with Alabama to bring him in. Uh, just tonight, another rumor if they can't get that done. I don't know if you saw, but an old favorite of yours and ours, uh, subject of an old this and that, this or that. Adam Gase might actually be in the running for this offensive coordinator yeah. role potentially. Yeah. And um, I saw that we'll just, floated. We'll see. No, you know what? I saw that floated in the late fall. Um, I, I really did when the, when the Pats were going on like this tear and, uh, you know, uh, Josh McDaniel's stock started to rise again. And it was right. people were mumbling like, geez, hey, this could be another year where. And I, I had heard it thrown out there on some talk radio, you know, Adam Gase, you know, I, I wouldn't be shocked if he landed with the Patriots. I wouldn't be, I'd, I'd be straight up with you. I wouldn't be disappointed with that. Adam Gase is your typical 
much better coordinator than right. he will ever be head Agreed. coach. So Agreed. I'd be all in on that. I'd really be good there. Uh, and, and rounding out our Patriots news, you may have also heard, uh, Major Jay, that former uh, assistant uh, Brian Flores has decided to sue the National Football League what? Uh, and some other teams um, because our coach, uh, Bill Belichick, plays a little bit of a central role here. Ma he made a boo-boo. Text he texted Flores the night before his interview, hey, congrats, sounds like you're the guy. They're going to be making their move on you. And Flores texted him back something to the effect of, hey, thanks, coach. Wait, are you, do, you, do you realize it's Brian Flores and Belichick Not and Brian. true Belichick, Belichick fashion? Coach, said, are you texting Brian Flores or Brian Gable? <laughs> um, to which Belichick probably threw, threw his phone, this damn thing, you know, scolded to the ends of the earth oh, technology. Yeah. Uh, if Saturday, if Saturday Night Live has one true sports fan in their circle of writers, they are going to have a field day this with Belichick, be Snap Face, and all of it. I, I mean, this is rich in irony, comedy, yeah. all of it, that Belichick is going to play a central role here. Um, yeah. You really I, couldn't write this, actually. You, you he, it's basically it's a skit hand-delivered uh, hand on a silver platter at SNL. I, I completely agree. Um, insane. I kind of feel bad for him because it really was an honest mistake. Oh. And now he's being tried. He might get even have to, at some point, um, testify, testify under oath. Oh, yeah. Exactly. He yeah. He, um, he sure will. Also, uh, current Patriots quarterback, uh, Mac Jones did make the pro bowl by yeah. virtue of 8,000 people dropping out or being hurt or not being <laughs> able to play, but he is probably the seventh or eighth quarterback and he's to make the pro bowl. But nonetheless, it will say on his resume forever. Pro Mac bowl. Jones pro bowl. 2021 good it. for him uh also a quick update not so much uh, of interest to you but for myself and the soccer heads out there u.s men's national team world cup qualifying update things are looking good my friends we got a, a w against el salvador three puntos there bad loss at canada dos acero uh the bad kind folks mm. but turned around and housed honduras the other night three nil all on set pieces things are Things are looking good. We're in good shape for the final qualifying window for the World Cup. Uh, in November, we've got one more window in March, three games in March. Um, take three to four points there. They're in without having to play in. Things are looking good. World Cup in November this year uh, in Qatar, Qatar, however you want to pronounce it, Q-U-A-T-A-R. 8,000 ways. Qatar. I don't know. Qatar. 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 I believe so. Like sitar. Correct. Okay. All right. Fantastic. So let's let's get into honoring our good close friend, soon to be friend of the podcast after this, Tom Brady. As his dad likes to call him Tommy. His dad still oh. calls him Tommy at 45 years old. But yes, him and Charlie Tommy. Weiss. Yeah. 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 Tommy. It's a good kid. Top five Brady moments. Let's, let's just go right into it. I mean, we're, we're just... Here we go. Let's it's, dive it's, right it's been, in. Yeah, dive right in. Go ahead. Number five. What do you got? What's your number, number five? Number five. Uh, Rams Super Bowl 2019. So not 2001. 2019. Rams Super Bowl. Brady on the sideline with like a minute and a half left. Brady on the sideline looks at Belichick and says, on fourth down kick a field goal here. It was like fourth and two, and Belichick was weighing, geez, do we go for it? The Always kick a field goal. You good on the field goal? Yeah. We'll get the field goal. 40 yarder, game's over. Pats at that point were up by seven, I believe. Right. Brady's looking at Belichick like. Isn't that when it was 10 to three? No, that, yeah, I think it was 10 to three. That made it 13 And I think that made it 13 to three. And, and, Bel and, and Brady's like, like, like he's catching Belichick Hello. at the moment. Like, yeah. are you? Is this McFly. thing on? like come on? You know, like give me the coordinators. Let me talk to somebody here. And, and on top of it, Brady is a he is a guy that wants to throw another touchdown. For him to have that moment right. of yeah. of true vision and say, "Our defense is, is got them. Let's kick the three. Take the go points. up by two scores. The game yeah. is over." I loved it. it was, it's one of my all time favorite Brady moments. How about okay. you? That's that's a good one. It's a good one. Definitely almost off the radar, but that's that's good. I like it. Um, 
My number five, my number would be a little more traditional, obviously, but uh, number five for me is Super Bowl 49 uh, against Seattle. Pats are down 10, eight and a half minutes ago in the fourth. Uh, they come back, they score, then Brady hits Edelman. Brady caught, touchdown, Julian Edelman. To take the lead with two minutes to go in the game, which leads to an all-time moment for the Patriots and for in the NFL in Super Bowl history. Uh, Butler intercepting Russell Wilson on a yeah. first and goal from the one to 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 seal the game. But obviously bring you know the the fourth quarter comebacks with you know, again being down to as we've seen so many times over being down multiple scores in the fourth quarter of big games, Brady, this one being such a big one and then ending with such a big moment. Uh, hitting element for that that go ahead score two minutes ago is my number five all time. Love it. Yeah, that's I, it, I, it's hard as a Pats fan when you think about all their Super Bowls, which ones stand out the most. You know, right. maybe that's next week's top five. Um, it, there's only six with Brady, but um, right. the Seattle one stands out for me pretty strongly. The Seattle one is a big right. one, so I love that one. Uh, what's your four? Uh, number four for me was actually. Uh, <laughs> This one's a little, little bit off a little bit, but for me it was huge because I, I had the privilege of actually being there. It was the uh, 2017, really, in 2018, AFC Championship game at home against Jacksonville. Uh, Pats are down 20 to 10, 11, 11 minutes to go. Uh, first Brady hits Amendola for a touchdown, makes it 2017, defense holds, and hits the go-ahead TD pass to Amendola in the back of the end zone as Amendola's catching it and falling out of bounds. Our second and goal. Make it to White. Looking around. Has time. Throws it. Did he get the feet down? What an effort. Touchdown, Amendola. Uh, with 2.50 to go, uh, to basically to, to put them up and uh, send them to the Super Bowl as a defense held Blake Bortles to nonsense and picks. And, and I believe Bortles actually closed that out with a terrible interception on the sideline, maybe to row. But um, yeah, just, just again, be, being down like that, again, late in, late in the game. Again, 10 points, fourth quarter, and he hits Amendola not once but twice to, to, to put them up. Typical Brady, typical Pats. Um, that one, again, for me, was huge because I was lucky enough to be there. So that's my number four. I, I was talking – I was talk, a, a quick question before we move on to my yeah. number four. Was that the game that Brady had the mangled thumb, that he had torn open his thumb in practice the week prior? I was talking to my son this the, the, tonight about this because Belichick just It was that know. season. I'm not sure if it was right before like where oh, it fell I, bef as far as in relation to that game specifically. Oh, I think it I think it was like 3 or 4 days before that Was game. it that week? Yeah, it was not the Super Bowl week. It was not No, no, the, was, the, the AFC Championship. Yeah, so we could we could, we'll double check that yeah, uh with, with check Eric that. Emmett with uh, with his sports knowledge. He'll probably have a better read on that. My number four or, um, I'm already seeing we're going traditional, non-traditional here. You're the traditional side, and I'm a little more non-traditional. So my number four right. top Brady moment was actually him getting knocked out of the 2001 AFC Championship game against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. And I'll tell you why that's the top four Brady moment for me. It allowed a sliver of of dignity for Drew Bledsoe yes. to play some role in the Patriots winning that that Super yeah. Bowl run, right? Yeah. Um, because up until that point, what a crazy scene it was to have Drew Bledsoe, established Pro Bowl quarterback, standing on the sidelines every game with a ball cap, a headset, and a clipboard, the look on his face pretty much said it all. He was, to it. he was not happy about it. Yeah. You knew he was gone after the season. You knew he was not going to stick around for this. I'm not a huge Bledsoe guy. Right. Um, I love what he's done post-career with the winery and all of that. And he seems to be a real stand-up dude. That's a fit. That's, so that's a top five Brady moment for me that he had no control over was right. when he got hurt. And Bledsoe got to come in, throw a little fade uh, to that, the back of the that, end zone. Was that was that Patton that caught that? That Patton, twist, I think. The twisting, um, the twisting catch in the, yep. in the back corner. Patriots have only scored three touchdowns their last 13 trips to the red zone. Bledsoe. 
Alonso throwing corner of the end zone. Touchdown. Yep, and, and, and it yeah. solidified the win and off the Patriots went. So that's my number four uh, okay. Brady moment. Uh, three, then? I'll roll into my number three. Uh, my number three is uh, Tom Brady's deflate gate press conference. It was, it, it was comedy gold, dude. He came in, he came in in full practice regalia, sweats, cut off sweatshirt, big tube sock looking yes. hat, you know, winter yeah. hat. Um, and he's just, he's just holding court there and expecting the press to just kind of give Tommy a pass here. And, and, and the press was just like, yeah, no, dude. Um, so wh- what are you telling the trainers to do with the footballs before the game? <laughs> he's just like, you know, everybody has a preference. Some guys like them round and some guys like them thin. Some guys like them uh, t- we're going to be fine. This isn't ISIS. This isn't, you know, you know, no one's dying. Uh, how, yeah. how am I supposed to answer this? You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was. Hey, guys, you know, we're buds. What's what's happening here? And, <laughs> and listen, I realized. Tommy, Tommy Curran. No, I, I may I may be, you know, mistaken here by some of our, our followers or, 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 or friends of the show that are just kind of like. You know, you don't really sound like a Brady fan. I'm a huge Tom Brady fan. But I have to say, that was an entertaining moment in Patriot history was that Deflategate press conference. So that's my number three. How about you? Uh, like you said, I'm going back traditional here. Uh, this one, this these top three ended up being pretty tough for me. But number three actually ends up going back to uh, Super Bowl 36 against the Rams, the original. Um. I mean, it's the drive, the drive where they were, the, the game was tied up. Everyone sure. expected them just, just, to, just to kill it, go to overtime, but they don't do it. It was about a buck 20 to go, no timeouts. He dinks and dunks down the field, um, mainly to J.R. Redmond. There's a Troy Brown pass in there. There's a Jermaine Wiggins pass in there. You're backed up. Brady's in the shotgun, and he's going to throw it. Nothing stupid. Gets it up. Position I would play for overtime. Now, just a minute. They have no timeouts left. Brady again throws. Here's Brady. Not much pressure. Throws out to Redmond again. Redmond. For the Rams since that right. point. That's right. Here's Brady again. Now, the middle pop. And it's Troy Brown. And he, right now, it would be a 53 yarder. Here comes the blitz. And here's Brady. He dumps it to Wiggins down to the 30, and now no question about it, they are in range, but they got to hurry. Here comes one of greater importance if he makes it, and it's right down the pipe. Adam Vinatieri. But they went ahead, and granted, he did nothing spectacular, but he just he found those open guys, 10 to 12 yard chunks. Drove them down, uh, which led to Van Terry's game-winning 48-yard field goal, uh, which really started the whole dynasty as we know it. Yeah, I'll go right to number two. Uh, number two, another iconic moment uh, as we know it. Again, traditional. Uh, part of the Super Bowl 51, the comeback, down 28-3 against Atlanta. Uh, specifically, the final drive um, in the fourth. First and 10, about 2.28 to go. Brady hits Edelman, a tipped ball by Robert Alford in the air. Edelman makes the catch by leaping between the two guys, landing on them, and catches the ball two inches off the ground. Here's Edelman broken up, and the pass is no sign yet. Edelman comes down with a football, and they're saying it's a catch. And we'll get another look at this. Alford knocked it up into the air, and let's see who comes down with it. Oh, that's a catch. Bats it a little bit, to, and then re-catches it. And, and then re-catches, it. pulls it re-catches in. Re-catches it, right, which ends up leading to a game-tying touchdown. Um, James White, and then Brady turns around, and they open overtime and drive right down the field for a winning touchdown run. Um, sweep. Sweep right by, by by James White. So to me, like especially that moment, even though 
it was a tip ball and he didn't exactly make the play himself but that that moment from brady to edelman for that catch in the midst of what is the greatest comeback in Super Bowl history um always stands out it's, it's obviously gonna stand out as, as a, a huge huge moment um, for brady i think for everybody at this point but that's my number sure. two what's yours uh, my number two is um, every pregame run up the sideline to jazz up the fans. I mean, listen, so here's the thing, right? Even on bad and bad wheels, sometimes you do it. Yeah. <laughs> so listen. I don't know that Drew Bledsoe was doing anything like that prior to Brady. I'm pretty sure Doug pretty Flutie. Sure he wasn't. I'm pretty sure Doug Flutie was never doing anything like that. Sprinting down the um, Maybe Terry Bradshaw way back in the 70s. I'm still not sure. And I can tell you this with certainty. If Mac Jones is doing it, it's not jazzing me up for any Patriots game. <laughs> I love Mac Jones. But Mac Jones is like a first grade school teacher he's he's more kind of like hey guys let's all get together now we're, we're he's gonna still get going into play. himself that's that's um, that so listen when brady would just come out and the the, the music is pumped in through the system and he just uh, that's yeah. that's iconic to me that's a that's my number two tom brady moment because there's about 280 of them from all the games he played with the pats so i, I do it. love that love it all I'll right. roll into my number one. Number my, one. My number one top, Brady moment. Tom Brady moment. I'm curious if you and I crossed paths here with our uh, number ones. Is this traditional? Or it's is almost. This, is this... this is more traditional. Um, it is the Seahawks Super Bowl. It is the end of the game. It is Brady on one knee, just chin on fist taking it all in and who's standing there trying to shake his hand trying to give him props good friend richard sherman the new england patriots are on to a celebration a fourth lombardi trophy is headed to one patriot place tom brady is a three-time super bowl mvp great player man great player and Sherman is just trying, Richard Sherman, credit to him, is just trying to tell him, hey, you're one of the greatest ever. Yeah. I've seen him say it in interviews after people have asked him, what were you trying, you know, he was like, I was congratulating the guy and telling him, you're one of the greatest of all time. Um, and Brady just sat there, took it all in, and then finally got up, shook Sherman's hand, um, as a good sport should do. Yeah. Um, that's, that's just an awesome Tom Brady moment. I love that one. So that's and not I'm, my I'm number I'm one. I'm a Richard Sherman fan. I'm a no. Richard Sherman no, fan. No, I'm not a Richard Sherman fan. <laughs> not a Richard Sherman fan. You um, mad, bro? You mad, bro? Yeah. Uh, and then you they didn't cue the meme where he's like, <laughs> wait, 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 he threw the interception? <laughs> the interception gets thrown and he's like, what? Inside the one at the most. And Malcolm Butler. And, and you're, and, I mean, it's Marshawn. <laughs> oh, yeah, It looks sure. like he was legitimately going to cry. Uh, so that was not my number one. Um, when we get out of this, one of my honorable mentions was a moment just split seconds before that, though, which is which is funny. Um, my number one, again, more traditional, is uh, it's actually going back to the original 20-2001 season. Not the Super Bowl, but actually a couple games beforehand, the, uh, the old tuck rule game. Yeah, um, and not specifically was... the tuck. But just more the sequence of events, again, leading up through the yep. tuck roll. You know, you're, again, you're talking about uh, fourth quarter, Pats are down at home, basically a snowball, down 13-3. to three. This is the drive even before the, the, the tuck roll game, the moment happened. He drives the, the team down the field, finishes off with a six-yard touchdown rush um, where he goes in, runs to the end zone, and, and famously, like trips and like falls over slips himself. and falls, trying to spike yeah. the ball, gets back up, freaks out. Steps up, gonna run it inside the five, touchdown! Blitz lost the football. It's on the ground, covered by the Raiders. 
His college teammate, Charles Woodson. Let's go back and take a look, and here comes Charles Woodson. Top of your screen, Charles Woodson untouched. The backfield saw he was recovered. After reviewing the play, the quarterback's arm was going forward, and it's an incomplete play. <laughs> of late. This is the Patriots' season on the line. The kick is away. It is. This is to advance to the AFC Championship game. To get the ball again, you got the tuck roll moment with, his, with Charles Woodson uh, coming in for the for the sack. Turns around right after that, 13-yard pass to uh, I believe it was David Patton, R.I.P. David Patton, uh, which led right to the Finitary field goal through the wind and snow to tie it. And then they turn around, open overtime with a strong, like this is a much stronger drive than even we saw in the Super Bowl to win that game. Yeah. Opens overtime with a strong drive, never even gave the Raiders a chance, went down and kicked the game winning field goal again with Vinatieri. And that moment solidifying, okay, the, this team's here to play. Like it was the last game at Foxborough Stadium. Um, you and I had been at the last, you and I together had been at the last regular season game at Foxborough Stadium. A couple weeks, maybe a week prior against the Dolphins. And this was the last game there. Uh, we watched this game, you and I together, in, in your parents' living at room. my parents' house. Did, did, went diving into the into the, the hallway on the hard wooden floor when these kicks were made. Yeah. Um, to me, that fourth quarter through overtime just cemented and well, started the Brady legacy. Like yeah. just leading that team from from down again, down ten in the fourth, and started that legacy of of fourth quarter comebacks that we didn't know at the time, but that ended up being the beginning of it all. Um, to me, that always stands out because of what all those those drives meant, those kicks meant, how huge that game was for for Pats fans, for everybody. Like that's that'll. Anytime I think about it, I always think about that moment, those moments, that game, and hence you see over my shoulder. Yeah, Brady from that game. Oh, sure. It's a lithograph. So that's my number one. Um, Love I mean, it. Honorable mention, a couple of them real quick uh, that I had is um, obviously not a moment so much, but the 2007 undefeated season, Brady having 50 touchdown passes, Randy Boss, <laughs> holistically as a collective, that is always going to stand out. Um, and another Good one call. that I wanted to put in the top five, but because it's such a singular moment, in, in reality, it would have actually fit in well with yours. Was before the Sherman moment, but right after, when 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 Butler Mark, uh, Butler makes that interception at the goal line, the quick pan to Brady on the sideline. Him jumping up and freaking out like he's like a six-year-old kid will yep. always send out to me as well. He's in the way he's like screaming and his, his voice goes up like six octaves because he can't believe he, what just happened and he can't, you know, he starts freaking out, um, which then leads into the moment you just talked of, of, you know, kind of, okay. Yeah. Take it I, in, Sherman. All right. Yeah, and it's then, a great, no, you're right. Through NFL films, it's a great moment. I'll, I'll say one on High knees mention. in the air, just like he oh, got yeah. more height on those leaps when he freaked out than probably any time in his entire life. Um, you know, there was, there was a great football life, Bill Belichick football life when the Pats, you know, destroyed the, the Tennessee Titans coached by Jeff Fisher in an October blizzard, like 54 50 to three, to, something yeah. like that. Right. Maybe 50 to nothing. Or 50 stupid. to nothing, was, 57 to nothing. Yeah. And Brady looks at Belichick at midfield before the game starts and they're kicking around snow. And Brady says, this is a QB's dream. You know, they'll never rush a quarterback in this crap. And uh, Belichick <laughs> says, you know, uh, it could be a good day to throw. And Brady says, aren't they all? <laughs> <And> Belichick, <laughs> Belichick, for a moment, Belichick is just kind of in, in another world. And then he catches himself and he laughs. And he's like, no, not every day is a good day to throw, <laughs> Not going to get me on that one, Tommy. <laughs> all right. Good, good times. Uh, Tom Brady retiring off into the sunset. It was it was good while it lasted, but uh, yeah. All right, so that that's let's put let's put a pin in that. Let's roll into some uh, 
some Sox and Bees talk. So a couple of subjects we have not spent a lot of time on lately, some Red Sox, some Bruins. We're actually also going to welcome in a special guest for this for this little segment. Uh, it's actually going to be the Director of Athletics at Goodwin College in East Hartford, Connecticut. University, now university. Goodwin University, I stand corrected <laughs> there. <laughs> Folks, this, this school is, is up and coming, let me tell up you. Up and coming. Uh, but uh, known as coach, Dr. Eric Emmett Brown. Let's, uh, let's get a round of applause. <laughs> Dr. Emmett, how are you? Welcome to the podcast. Glad to have and he you. Are, he, right off the bat, he answers the first question. What you <laughs> sipping on? Uh, this is a Heine Light. Heine so, uh, Light. All right. Well, for those of you out there who don't know what he's talking about, it's a Heineken in the green bottle. And it's a light. But <laughs> hey, it's a so, so, Eric, really quick, before we kick off the socks and Bees, you're a football guy, and uh, we know your allegiance lies with the uh, teal and orange, typically. <laughs> Um, but you can appreciate Brady. What's what what signature Wait, what? moment stands out for you for Tom Brady's career? So, uh, just to and and I love the uh, the top five. Um, that was the 2017 playoffs when Tom slammed in the sexy Rexy it, in practice oh, and yes. opened his thumb up. Yeah. But then they were playing Jacksonville in that first week, the right. first. So. Um, no, it was, but, it was uh, an AFC championship game. It, it was. Was it the AFC championship? Because I know. Yeah. They, played, yeah, they played Jacksonville in the AFC championship. Oh, yeah. It was it's so yeah. hard to think of Jacksonville as being in an AFC championship game. <laughs> you know? Again, Blake Bortles was the quarterback. I, that team got by on defense and, and some play. <laughs> I mean. Definitely. Um, Duval. But my, my – so, and this drives my son nuts too because – I will never root against Brady. I I was resigned to the fact as a Finns fan that we were going to get beat twice a year <laughs> and that um, you have to sit back. Cause I grew up kind of on the tail end of Joe Montana. So, and just watching Montana play and he was, he was a surgeon out there. So I really right. looked at Brady as that guy where, you know, it, um, I never rooted against him, but um, my moment for Brady uh, has to, it's got to be when he came up. He, I guess it would be off field when he introduced himself to Mr. Kraft and said, I'm the best thing you ever did. And um, yeah. I'm going to bring you guys championships, whatever the case. That's Cause I think Kraft might've thought he was the pizza delivery guy or something like that. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> Am yeah, I supposed to like... tip you or <laughs> <laughs> thanks though. But it was, the, tipping me. And, and I was telling D dub, uh, we were talking about this a couple of days ago, with Brady, and and I listened to Felger and Maz, and I listened to um, um, I listened to Zolik and Bertrand, and right. and a lot of folks just jumping on Brady, saying, "Oh my God!" And I can't believe you know he didn't thank the Patriots and other he didn't do that. Yeah. It's like, um, guys, go to Gillette, look at the six banners hanging, you know, yeah. in what the western side of the field in yeah. the end zone. Um, yeah. And uh, you know he's going to come back in front of a packed house. They're going to retire the number 12, right. and it's going to be official. I, I just, you know, I'm – he's a guy that comes along once in a lifetime, and I think um, New England fans are spoiled that you could turn on the TV, usually right. at 4, 7 on a, on a, a weeknight game because we played more weeknight games with New England because right. they were good. But yeah. – um and expect a win. And, uh, and just as an aside, I know, um, I know there's uh, some Mac Jones fans in the house, but, um, apparently in the dodgeball tournament tonight, he was, uh, outgunned by Hunter Renfro. <laughs> so, uh, I don't think he's got the arm, but, <laughs> well, well, Hunter Renfro, to be fair, is going to outgun pretty much anyone in dodgeball. Um, I'm not playing dodgeball with Hunter Renfro. I'm probably not even watching. Wait, that is, which Hunter tournament. Renfro is this? Is this right fielder Hunter Renfro or Hunter Renfro <laughs> receiver from the Raiders? The Raiders receiver, right? Oh. I, I was th I was thinking maybe the Brewers said, "Hey, Hunter, what are you doing tonight? Why don't you go on down? Don't worry about it." <laughs> but and just a real quick aside on that. So, kind of like. I was at the game 
um, where he came back from the deflate gate right. sham. Yeah. And that place against Cincy, <clears throat> excuse me, was just rocking. And they play that, that, um, you know, Spartacus music where he comes like sprinting out of the end zone. Right. The place was just going nuts. Um, and it, and it, I mean, think about how many players can bring that kind of energy to, to a field. Right. Like yeah. Wayne Gretzky couldn't do it on the ice. Right. Jordan maybe could do it in an arena, but not with that kind of intensity. Yeah. And footballs were 11 on 11. So you can't have one guy really dominate. Right. Right. So anyway, that, those are the two like moments that I really kind of that stand out that's in really my. Cool. No, that's, that's good. I, I like I like the off to being like I, I, I kind of wish I had gotten more non-traditional now because I like I like both of yours a lot more. But um, well, thank all right, you. cool. All right, coach. We are let's 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 talk some socks. Let's start with some Bruins. You've got you got the jacket on. You're ready to go. Let's just dive into some Bruins. We we've not touched too much on the Bruins on the show. Uh, we, we've dabbled here and there, but um, we've got you on. Let's talk a little bit. Um, let's let's start with Tuca. We can start with Tuca because he's he's been the hot topic for um, going on a month now. Yeah. Um, came back. You know, had some ups and had a couple of good games. Had some rough games. Now he's obviously out with with injury. Well, who's to say whether it's related to the hip surgery or not? We don't know necessarily. Might be back next week. Who knows? What are your what are your, what are your thoughts on what's going on with Tuca at this point? Expectations, so I, et cetera. I, I think that I'm a uh I'm a I'm the type of person that will I understand that the goalie is one of the hardest jobs. You know, they're the only one at the end of the game right. that gets the W or the L fix or their name. Right. So sure. So they're going to take the heat when their defense breaks down. And the beast defense has been pretty soft. Um, yep. But uh, I also think that um, this was kind of a let's catch lightning in the bottle by Don Sweeney and sign this guy to a nickel and dime contract. Sure. And um, when you threw a lot of money at Linus, who's – Linus is actually halfway decent when yep. you have some defense in front of him. Yep. But you also have – uh, Swayman, who could be, you know, he could be the guy. He the could be the guy. next guy that you have for, you know, the next 10 years. But so I think Tuca might take this week of vacation to look to assess and say, you know what, I'm just not at that level anymore. Right. And not many guys come back from the surgery that he had. Um, yeah, the hip labrum is, is is crazy. We've had Dr. Geary on a few times, and he's he's talked about how trying to come back from that is not – it's a, it's a tall task. So – Especially for a butterfly goalie. I mean, this guy's exactly. had all night. All night. So I'm. Um, I think this was maybe if I can come and you know throw a couple of blanks up and shoot, you know, and, and we and we get some wins and the fans are behind him and the fans have been very supportive of him. Absolutely. Yep. But it's only because Linus has been playing so so and uh, Swayman was kind of like the second coming and then he came down to reality. But uh, at the end of the day, it's more of a they're not in as bad of a situation as it might appear because they've only got committed to these three goalies about six or close to 7 million. Right. Where you look at some of these other teams and they've got like nine or 10, I think the caps have a ton of money committed to goalies yeah. and, um, and, and they're, you know, you you really like the scenario is if you can get a, if you can get a guy like a frontline guy for maybe six and then have a good backup for a couple mil and you're hitting eight against the cap you're in pretty good shape and right. you can get maybe, you know, 25, 30 starts out of your, your solid backup where, you know, you're going to win half those games. So, but there it's, I, I think too, I, I think we might've seen Tuca play his last game for the bees. I really do. I think he might come back okay. from wow. vacation and retire. Which, which again goes back to Olmark that, you know, again, there, there was, I think there's a lot of criticism early on, like, okay, you know, the, the investment in Olmark, um, and then, especially when the Tuca start coming back, I'm like, all right, what do we get? You know, the, the whole question about what to do because they couldn't do anything with Allmark. Swimming had options to go down to, to Providence, and then now if it ends up with with Tuca, it's going to make again that Allmark. It's going to I think it's going to revalidate that Allmark signing a little bit at this point because, like you said, he's 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 been decent, Allmark, especially over the last week, even alone, he's been playing pretty well between the pipes. So, so well, um, I think the I mean Sweeney got a lot of heat because he let Ladar walk. You know, they they yeah. unloaded him to. Well, I think beat them actually. Uh, <laughs> Calgary solidly, yeah. And I think that was like his second or third shutout of the season. And yeah, 
you know, Western Conference, a little bit different. I wouldn't mind sure. playing Edmonton every night, but um, <laughs> right. But still, I think Swayman's got much more upside because he's, I mean, Vladar is just a big guy and yeah. um, kind of like a, a Ben Bishop frame, really tall, a little bit lanky. But, um, you know, Swayman's coming out of Hockey East. He's the real deal. And, right. and you look at some of the goalies in the NHL that came out of Hockey East, and they're kind of like the cornerstone guys. You got a right. couple playing in the All-Star game this weekend. So uh, as well as um, – Wyatt Russell, Kurt Russell's kid, will be one of the goalies in the breakaway contest. I didn't know that. Okay. Did not know that's, that either. Coach, let me ask you. I, I'm uh, listen. I am baseball first, football second, basketball third, and hockey falls in that fourth tier. But it's got a special place in my heart just because you know I had an older brother that played, and and certainly uh, you know Major J and I have our battles with. NHL All Stars Online with with video gaming from from time to time. <laughs> Listen, I, when I so I do catch Bruins from time to time. I have to tell you, Pasternak is to me the most electric Bruin I've seen in years, and it it hits me a little bit that it doesn't seem like he's marketed nearly as much as he could be from a Bruin standpoint. Am I off there? And do do you are there gaps in his game? I t- I I put the Bruins on the other night uh, when they won, and sure enough, within five minutes, Pasta scores a goal. Scores. I, I mean, it's it's just it's it, it, the guy is you talk about lightning in a bottle. I mean, this guy is so super talented. Am I overrating him in my in my hockey fandom? What do you think? So in his um. Renegotiation comes up, and I think another five years. I think he's going to want to bring you in, and maybe uh, bring in some of this <laughs> Sundance, the hype man. Yeah, because <laughs> here, here's what I'll be his Scott Boris. I'm good there, uh, bro. You could never be a Scott Boris. You have too much integrity. But um, <laughs> so this guy, okay. <laughs> here's my here's here's my um, my pasta take. Big fan of pasta. Yeah. Uh, however. Uh, pasta, uh, has never seen a shot he didn't like, and he is a very good guy when you get him on one of the circles, preferably the left right. where, uh, he's just, he's a surgeon. However, he's a, he doesn't like to go in the slot. And when you have Taylor Hall on that line, right. that's okay. He's going to get those greasy goals because Hall's a bigger, scrappier guy. Um, pasta's a finesse player, plays a European game, you know. Um, fast out skate guys, but um, if you'll notice when he's carrying the puck in, even when they're uh, at a man advantage, um, he loses it a lot because you know, if 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 I'm gonna have somebody carry the puck in the zone, it's gonna be Marshan every time, yeah, because that guy it's on it's like glued to his stick, yep. he's just an extreme talented stick handler. But Pasta tries to get you know on Sports Center every shift where he's going to do these dipsy do plays. He's not a very good passer. So he's so kind he's of a, a home run guy. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost all or nothing at times. Exactly. And if okay. you put him on a line where he's going to make the plays, um, he's not going to be nearly as successful when you've got a former MVP in Taylor Hall. Okay. And I mean, they've been shifting lines around. And the big thing was when Krejci left, you would have, you know, this could have been a lot different looking last year if they would have put Krejci up with him um, and put Poss in the second line instead of put all your horsepower on that first oh, line first of the, line. with, you know, Berge and Martian. But, yeah. um, but Pasta's, Pasta's a good guy. I do think they market him. But one of the things that you have to remember about Boston is it's the lunch pail mentality. You know, it's all for one and you don't really have that superstar like in the heyday um you know a little bit before me but when you had Orr and esposito and johnny busick it wasn't like hey this is bobby Orr. hey this is johnny it was gotcha. they it all was the had a job the to do it's just and, the bruins yeah i got you and, and there's one guy they, they've been looking at they, they, they would market right now it's still bergeron just because he's there's the longevity he's been there we're talking what 15 what, what how many 13 so, years now what a, yeah i think it's i think it's pushing 60 right 60 cause, yeah because i think yeah, he was in the for, yeah, oh, yeah, back in 04, he was down there with um with Raycroft in the like the futures game or something. Which is crazy. Um yeah, I uh 
Pasta's, I mean, it's, it's like you said, he, I think all or nothing home run. I mean, that says it all. I mean, like he's his numbers. So I actually put, I was actually looking this up earlier. So last 13 games since basically since they played Tampa on January 8th, so we're saying like about a month now, hmm. 13 games, 21 points um, included, but 13 of those are goals. So it goes back to yeah. like you were saying, coach, he's not much of a passer. He's not going to get this assist. When you have 21 points and 13 of those are goals, that kind of says a lot as it is. Um, five of those are multi goal games. So I think that that actually really lends credence to what you're saying. What you're saying, he's not he's not going there getting points with assists. So, the Colorado game the other night, Colorado's cream of the crop in the West, right? Right. And they've got this game won. Colorado pulls their goalie. So coach, against maybe his better wishes now, obviously hindsight's twenty twenty, has um, he's got pasta out there, and of course because. Or empty net, Pasta's a goal scorer. Maybe right. you can really ice it, right? And it totally backfired. So Pasta's not a great defensive forward, and Cal- Colorado scores, and right, then true. Kale McCarr comes over in, in overtime and wins it. And Kale McCarr is like as close to second coming of Bobby Orr as we're going to find in our All, life. All star, yeah. He, fi- he finally made he made an All Star game. Yeah, he's he's in the he's, he's playing this weekend. He's he's having an incredible first half. So I do think the the cross that Pasta bears is that his defenseman, his coach was a defenseman drafted in the first round by the Blackhawks. So, you know, he's that play a 200 foot game, play all three zones of the ice and pasta really likes to play, you know, the two thirds. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, right. Great. All right. Yeah, no, all right. Some, some good Bruins insight there, coach. Let's, let's, um, let's, let's hit the reverse button here. Let's, let's talk some socks now too. We've got you, we've got you here. Um, not not a ton to talk about, obviously. Again, with the lockout and everything else going on, but there's been some stuff out there. Um, what are your thoughts? First off, there's a little debate here between Major okay. Jay and I. I am I, I am okay <laughs> with this rumor that the Sox are like ready to land Suzuki. Okay, Saya Suzuki Saya. I'm I'm not sure, but it's it's a Suzuki. Um, and Major J is not on this train. He he is he is oh, yeah. off. Wow. He is not a fan. He he it it conjures up memories of K. Igawa with uh, the Yankees and You're their sick. horrendous investment. I'm seeing visions of you know that guy that plays for the Angels. I think he's going to be on MLB the show cover. Such an optimist. Uh, if this guy comes and he's right-handed, if this guy comes in. And it's 30 bombs. What's your take on, on this Suzuki rumor? Are you a fan or, or are you praying against it with, with, with everything you have? So I will tell you right now, you're getting – and I think I know why this guy appeals to you, D-Dubs, because you're getting a right-handed Mike Greenwell. Okay. <laughs> oh, um, Jesus. You say Gator and he assault. melts. <laughs> you say Gator and he melts like a uh, cheap oh. ice cube in the summer. Oh, oh. God. You're I've been looking. I've been looking at his sold. numbers, right? So he's playing in a smaller park, right? Okay. With okay. inferior pitching, okay. Yeah. True. He's hitting. I think he's played seven full seasons. Came up in 2013, I believe, but he's averaging like 20 and change bombs a year, maybe 26. Okay. Uh, 130 hits a year, right? You have that in Duran coming up, so you're going to throw oh. all this dough at. Thank you. Are we talking about the same Dur- Jaron Jer- Duran? Yeah, <laughs> or other guys you could sign. Like it's, it's I'm telling you, I just. Well, it, this it, goes it, back to uh, why did we even trade Renfro? Why did we even trade? That Renfro? was again. That was more about the whole like two years arbitration. That was all about like long term like finagling with with the contracts and stuff with him. Can we? Can we? Jump in if you don't guys don't mind. Can we jump into a little bit of the lockout? And because we're this kind of falls oh, right yeah. into the right into the yeah. lockout. Because these these players, first of all, what they met four times, no progress, right? right. So we can kiss spring training goodbye. And then yeah. if we have a shortened spring training, you know what happens when people start getting hurt, right? Sure. So but the these the, the players are like, look, we wanna we wanna lose the three year uh, or the six year rights three-year arbitration so we they don't want to lock these kids up and they want to think get free agency at like 29 and a half they want to be eligible right they want want to do age base yeah so and the money is there 
but it's not getting to the bottom. It's staying at the top. Right. And, um, and I when think you say it, staying at the top coach, do you mean it's staying with the top tier players or you mean ownership is just keeping that profit? Well, I think ownership is, is conveniently dancing around their quote unquote cap, but right. they're also they're You know, you look at in, in guys, no, make no bones and D dub knows I'm, I, I am not a fan of this ownership group. I am not a fan at all. I think <laughs> they brought in Heim Bloom to turn it into Tampa Bay North and nickel and dime guys as much as they can. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that they want to boast about instead of, instead of talking about we're bringing in Suzuki, you got Casas who's going to hit you 35, 40 bombs a year. Looks like a, it. Maybe yeah. a year away. Yeah. Right. Right. Mayor, the kid is going to be Bogarts 2.0. Yep. And I hate to make this comparison because I can't stand this guy, but this guy looks like a rod. He he's got the, yeah. the build, yeah. um, the pop. Yeah. He's not, he's not going to steal you 40 bases a year, but he's a four yeah. and a half tool player. Haven't even talked. Right. Haven't even mentioned blaze Jordan. Right. I, I mean, he's blaze. Jordan's another guy with pop. What he won his yeah. first home run, yeah. national home run title at eleven, I think. I mean, the kids can just flat out hit. Yep. But um, but they got him on, and and another comparison. I, I really see that kid just the swing with the heel. I see him as a right-handed Jim Tomei. The build. Wow. They're <sighs> telling him already he's got to lose weight. Wow. He's getting no kidding. doughy. But no the problem, kidding. Doughy. <laughs> you're gonna get you're gonna Which... have to slide Devers to first. Right. And you're going to have to make room on the right, on the left side of infield for both Meyer and yeah, Blaze, I yeah. think, because you know that they're going to keep these guys down long enough, depending on how this lockout ends. They're going to yeah. try to keep these guys down longer so they get that extra year extra with them. Year. And it's just so filthy. But yeah. I'm, I'm just not a fan of of how a big market team like Boston is is literally fishing off the scrap heap, and their solution to center is bringing back JBJ based on the BS of sabermetrics. I can't and to quote imagine. the great Tommy Lasorda, JBJ couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. <laughs> so I, so listen, gun to your head. I, I just, I do not, I maybe I refuse to see it. Gun to your head, does, is JBJ starting in center field on, let's call it May 15th, because that's probably when, the season's going to open up. It, you're calling it JBJ. I think, is I think no. Center? I think PK is. I think JBJ is going to be your fourth outfield. Your fourth. Yep. Okay. That's what I, I'm thinking. I can live with. I can live with that. He'll. He'll listen. Good for a home run off the bench here and there. He's a late defensive inning. Yeah. Let's keep that. Right. Okay. Okay. But think I'm about right this. Pre-COVID, you had Ben and Tende, JBJ and Mookie in the outfield and. And they're all over the base. Well, JBJ's back, but they did their victory tour with other cities and teams. And I think it's like that's how we're looking at when these guys get to their peak, they're valued differently. And and Heim's whole mission again is Tampa Bay North. Unload these guys just like they did with Blake Snell last year with yeah. the uh, or two years ago. Yeah, to San Diego. Yeah, I just it drives me nuts. They've got the money, John Henry. Forget Liverpool. Put your money right here. Yeah, that's what I can't figure out is why what this edict is or was maybe a year or two ago or whatever they came to it where they basically said, you know what? All right, we we've we've done enough. It's time to, you know, strap up and start thinking. Again, we've been saying something that's I've been talking for for I don't know how long about. I I, I felt for going on two years now. This team was really trying to to clean up the sheet to get ready to sell. Um, I don't know that's necessarily the case anymore, but I'm not sure. I'm, I'm curious what they are doing to try to leverage, try to get more cash or something. That, clearly, they're, 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 they're not trying to save money for the sake of just putting in their pocket. If they're trying to put in other investments or something on, on a grander scale, but I'm not sure what the change in philosophy was where they just hit a, hit a point and said, all right, we've, we've done our due here. Now it's time to reshift priorities as far as the ownership group goes. I don't know. It's, it's just odd. Oh, well, I guess you know, they're they're yeah. looking to buy a football pro a uh, football team so they can have every major sport. The Penguins weren't enough. <laughs> we're going to buy the Pens. Now we're going to look at. We want to have our hands in every major sport. Wow. That's what they want. <sighs> and um, you've got a Hollywood guy with uh, good old Tom back there, and yeah, you've got 
John Henry, you know, just sitting on the deck of his yacht docked in Boston Harbor, calling shots, you know, keeping the yeah. globe from printing anything negative about his team. It, it drives me nuts. Yeah. It's that leadership group needs to go and you got to bring in folks. And, and, yeah. and, and the thing is to look, how many of us thought like as a kid, I didn't think I'd be going to watch duck boat parades because the Sox right. would be winning. And right. I've been to a couple, yeah. but we're spoiled now where we expect it every few years. And it's like, I'm okay with, if you put a team that's likable out there, that's competitive um, and just beats the Yankees. I mean, that's the criteria, <laughs> right? That, that was that's that was really check, overall check, at the bar. Check. Sure, no, no, that's 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 good. Love so it, go, coach. going back to you, actually touched on a little bit. And I want to go back to it. Um, we were talking about the, some of the kids coming up. Um, not so much the kids coming through the pipeline like Marcelo and Blaze and so, but the uh, some of the kids we've got now. Give us your. And I think something that's mentioned to you earlier. So give us your thoughts or your breakout candidate between either the rookies or even second year players. We'll extend to second year players because there's some pitchers that obviously made some noise last year. Um and Hawk and Whitlock. Who's who do you have your eye on to really make a breakout this year? Assuming we play a real year. I really believe and we talked about him, I mentioned him, but I think Casas is going to be up this year. I yeah. think they're going to make the jump. Agree. Agree. Because they have a gaping hole at first base. Uh, Dauber didn't cut it last year. Right. You know, I mean, he was he he's he's okay, but I think he's more of a four A player. I really do right. think he's a guy that will, that can hit triple A and struggles a little bit up in the bigs. But um, I do see them pushing this kid, um, and I think they're gonna kind of hedge their bets because they know. I mean, they gave they gave Meyer. I think they gave him like a six and a half million or six point six million dollar signing bonus, so which much. is like sick money, which never happens, right. especially with this with this front office. So they know that this kid. It, uh, you guys remember a few years ago when the um, when the D, um, Devil Rays, they were Devil Rays at the time. Yeah, I think no, maybe they were Rays now because then they they took Longoria aside. I think before even his first full season in the majors oh, and like and went ahead and. Or seven years at him. Yeah. Um, that's kind of like the they appease one player and then they lose the rest of them. And I think I I really think they're gonna try to do that with Mayer, but I do think Casas might be the benefactor of something like that because they're gonna forego some of that service time. I mean, you look at Jeter Downs, right? I think Jeter Downs is another four A guy. I don't think yeah. they have a place to put him. Um Ideally, he's, he's a kid that I liked when they made that trade initially, but I'm it's starting to seem like after this past year, like okay, he he may not be. Oh, we're not getting anything out of yeah, him. Yeah, he'll be a guy you see in September with a couple at bats that they he'll say. He'll be a guy you see oh, in, a trade, in a deadline deal yeah. for something it, else it, later. That on. too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just a lot of potential, but never right. really follows through. But I do think that the the one the the one thing the Sox had been missing was getting true corner on the power, uh, true power on the corners with. You know, Endeavors is obviously a power hitter, and he's gotten better defensively, but I do think they're ultimately going to move him because they're not going to want to pay him. They can't pay. They're going to lose Bogarts. Bogey already said he'd slide over a third, right. you know, to to appease the move for, for Mayer. But um, I think they're, get, they're, they're going to need Casas' bat in the lineup, um, and the kid's shown he can hit at, well, not all levels, but right. he's uh, – He's the type of guy that hits, you know, to all fields. He's not just a dead pull. He's somebody that I think will be a really good Fenway hitter. Um, so you need that at Fenway as a lefty, right? You know, for at least hey, 80 games. You know? right. Yeah, no, I think you're right on there, Coach. I think Cassis has it. Last question for me. Ballpark the percentage, and I think I see where this is going, oh, and it's boy. really unfortunate. But ballpark, This is back to Suzuki again. It's not. It's, okay. it's not. But ballpark the percentage for us. That somehow, some way, Schwarber ends up back with the Sox because, man, talk about a guy who had a really nice three month stint and actually missed the first half of it, quite honestly. Um, but so really Schwarber endeared stand. himself, really endeared himself to the fan base, and it just looks like a, a one and a one and done. What What are the chances he comes back? So I think that. Uh, I, I, that kind of there's needs to be another shooter drop. So one of the uh, things that the MLB 
uh, is pushing, obviously, is unified DH, DH in both leagues, yep. which right. means Schwarber becomes more of a commodity to more teams at that yep. point because he's he's not going to take a gold glove home. You know, he might be somebody else's. It's not going to be his, right? So <laughs> he did have that one game at first base, though, <laughs> against the Rays. So. And he let you know about it, too. <laughs> he let the whole ballpark know, yeah. hey, I can make a play I or two play. when you need me. 2 2 pitches bounced out to first. There he goes. Better toss it. <laughs> so I think that, however, this plays out, I do think one of the uh, one of the deals, one of the things that comes out of the agreement ultimately is yeah. Universal DH. And I'm a traditionalist and I hate the DH because the American League managers can sit on their ass and pardon my French and not, not really have to pull levers. Yeah. Um, where you can't do the double switch like you can in the right National now. League, where you have to pull a pitcher that's maybe halfway decent, and you got to go to a pen that maybe through the last two games. Right. Um, so it takes away from the uh, the strategy of it, but I think that uh, Schwarber is 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 probably going to spend the majority of his time in that role as a DH, and I think that if you look at the the, the numbers, the wins above replacement numbers. Um, they were, I want to say he was higher than JD last year. So, and you look at, wow. at the disparaging contracts there where they signed him for a song or they pay, were paying him a song compared to what JD's making. So, hmm. um, I think, I think they would love to have him back, but I think again, they're waiting. The other teams are waiting to see how this union plays out and they're going to end up grabbing this guy because right. I mean, Throw him in Colorado. I think Colorado is one of the rumored sites for maybe the Giants. Where the, that as long as it's not the Yankees, I don't care. Colorado makes sense given how much talent they're losing. I mean, they're going to have no bats left in that lineup to begin with. I mean, they're losing story to, as it is. You've got uh, Blackman, who's basically on his, the end of his career at this point. He's falling off a cliff. I mean, um, but – all right, good stuff, Coach. We uh, we appreciate you coming on. This has actually been good because we've we've been wanting to talk some more socks the off season, little Bruins. So you you've come in and helped us do that. We appreciate it, and uh, we'd like to have you back at some point if if uh, you're amenable to that. Oh my gosh, I had a great time, guys. Thank you so right, much man. for for having me out here. And um, anytime I can bend somebody's ears talking sports, hockey, Love and baseball. It. Love it. So thank All you right, very much. Coach, Appreciate it. thanks a lot. You have a good night. Take care. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. See ya. See ya. Wow. Coach Evan. I, I got to tell you. Good times. Yeah, right. good times. Um, you know, I pasta, I, I, I clearly am not getting enough Bruins action in during the week because pasta's I got another side to them. No, you're not. <laughs> we actually talk about this off the air. <laughs> but, but that's fine. Sunday, as I quote, I gotta watch more Bruins. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep, that would help. We digress. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Out here on an island. Okay. All right. So let's. Uh, we're gonna switch gears again. Let's um, jump into some championship uh, game review. We had NFC, AFC, and NFC championship games last weekend. Uh, those were fun to say the least, yeah. especially if you're not a fan of the Chiefs. <laughs> Um, or the 49ers. Uh, huh, what a weekend. What 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 a Sunday uh, for these games. So let's 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 talk about Cincinnati and Kansas City to start. Um, right off the bat, like <laughs> I don't know how I don't I really don't know how much of it to to say it's a choke job by Kansas City and how much of it's just Burrow and the boys. But I mean both. You know, Cincinnati isn't known for their defense. They played solid, but they're generally not known for the defense. They're known for for being burrowed receivers, mixing that offense. Kansas City scored three points in the second second half and overtime combined at Arrowhead. It was like something stupid, like three points, 117 total yards. Like they just completely fell flat for like two hours. So yep. I don't like that's. As, as great as Mahomes is, that's shocking. Um, and, 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 and granted, and, that's, and before you start, just the, the Cincinnati yep. pass rush, yep. big part of that, bookend, bookend um, 
defensive ends in Sam Hubbard and Trey Hendrickson, who they signed away from um, New Orleans in the offseason. Obviously, those two were huge to me in making that happen. When you got two guys who can pressure on 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 both sides without having to blitz and just playing four four rush, and they're constantly in in your backfield, it makes a huge difference. I get that. McKinsey has a pretty good offensive line generally. Like Mahomes is the guy. He's the playmaker. He's slinging. He's making plays. It didn't happen. I, I don't know what happened. Maybe he was too busy thinking about his wife and kid. I don't, I don't know. Um, they may be posing for pictures later on with them. I don't know. Yeah, uh, listen, you know me. Uh, in a game where the Pats are not involved, I had no dog in the fight. Um, I, I, all day, every day, I'm, I'm going for the underdog, which was Cincinnati here. And, uh, you know, watching the first half, you know, you're thinking to yourself, well, it's going to be great to watch Kansas City back in the Super Bowl. Until, I had to coach my my 15 year old son through the game. Like it's only seven nothing. It's only 14 nothing. 21 to nothing. Right. You can come back. And and, <laughs> 21 nothing. Yeah. and listen, you know, right before halftime, you bring a really good point up. Right before halftime, Kansas City has the ball and they could kick a field goal and get those extra three points. And they yes, just heard. Mahomes runs around, runs out of time. And, you know, there is a moment I would point to towards Andy Reid's resume where I don't think Reid is a phenomenal coach. I never have. He's a good football coach. He does not belong in the realm of Belichick, Steve yeah. Walsh. It, he just he just doesn't. I'm sorry. You, it, it brings me back to the Super Bowl against Philadelphia, Pats, Philly, when sure. Donald McNabb wasn't, was having some cardiovascular issues. And and Reed, when, when Philly's trying to, to play, you know they had what well, moments left. I'm trying to remember the exact specifics, but they weren't like they weren't running quickly. They were just no you know, it was normal plays. And, 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 and hey, the tempo, the tempo and, wasn't and, there, and it's like I remember looking at Andy Reed like, why are you not running like yeah. high pace? No, like, what's what's going go, on get here? Get to the line. Yeah. So no, great. That was you know 15 years ago, but. 16, 17 years ago now at this point. It was like 2004, but, you know, still. Yeah. So I'd love uh, to see Burrow. Listen, I, Burrow is exciting. He's fun to watch. He's not a running quarterback, but he'll hightail it out of there when he needs he to. You know, that's that's pretty fun to watch. Um, and, and man, Cincinnati's got awesome receivers. I mean, we know about Jamar Chase, but um, the other T guys that they T have Higgins, there. Tyler Boyd. Are, Higgins, are, are, oh, my goodness. Uh, they're fun. They're fun, man. I, I, I'm I'm certainly going to root for them in the Super Bowl. I don't think they're going to win it, but uh, I'll be rooting well, for them. Perfect segue to the uh, the other game because they're going to be playing in L.A. <laughs> it's going to be the Rams, a home game. For the second year in a row, you've Terrible. got a Super Bowl team getting a home game uh, just by default because of the rotation. Mm -hmm. Had never happened before last year with Tampa. But you got the Rams who took down the Niners, came back and beat the Niners. Um and the Rangers were controlling that game for a good a good chunk. Uh, at some point, I kind of figured things, I wouldn't say fall apart, but would get a little tighter. Old friend Jimmy G um, tends to be good for a gaffe here and there. He's not a bad quarterback. I'm not saying he sucks or anything crazy. He does have brain farts occasionally, and this one showed up. Granted, it wasn't completely his fault. The Rams' pass rush found themselves late in that fourth quarter, finally. They were not getting home at all during that game. Aaron Donald routed the troops. They finally started pressuring and breaking through on that last drive. Uh, which ended up with uh, on third down, they got to Garoppolo, spun him around. He decided instead of eating it and going to fourth down, which I get, games on the line when you're down, ends up hawking one up and it ends up going for an interception and uh, solidifying the game for the Rams. Kind of felt bad for Jimmy. Um, nice guy, always says the right things. Even this week, he's basically done press conferences essentially saying, appreciate everything the team and you fans have done for me. I'd love to hear. Thank you for everything, knowing, because he knows he's gone. He knows he's, they're getting traded. 
Uh, he's getting traded because um, Trey Lance is waiting in the wings. But Rams, I will say, happy to see Matt Stafford, though. he's been, I've, Again, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm Matt Stafford Stan. I, I've, I've always been a fan of this guy, going all the way back to his days in Georgia. Um, been rooting for him. I'm, I'm happy to see him. Yeah, agreed. It's a Super Bowl. Um, uh, yeah, I like Stafford a lot, and and, and listen, I like uh, Sean McVay a lot too. Um, he's a good coach, and, man. He's, he's a good coach. coach. He I, does think, I think his right players way. like him exactly. I think he just he's just a good Solid dude. guy. Um, yep. I'm hoping. Listen, I would love to see the Bengals come out on top here, but I'm really good if Sean McVay gets his first Super Bowl ring. Uh, you know. But, in, in this Super Bowl, he's he is a tremendous young coach that, uh, from by all accounts, everything I read, everything I watch, everything I hear, um, he does things the right way, treats his players the right way, looks to inspire as opposed to you know top down. Right. You're going to do this or you're going to get cut right. kind of thing. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm 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 rooting for Cincinnati, but all good if the Rams pull this one out. Yeah, I think we're we're gonna get definitely get into some more Super Bowl preview talk next week as we're kind of running into the game. But I think the opening lines it was give or take it came out it was the Rams by four, um, which is what kind of give or take what I was assuming it would be. I figured it'd be in the somewhere like the three and a half to the four range. Yeah. Um, with the Rams really being a true home team here. Right. You know, when this first came out, my first thought was. If you're gonna give me the Bengals and four points, I'm taking that every day of the week. Um, with that, with Joe Burrow on that offense. That said, I, I mean, it's hard not to pick the Rams simply because they're they got they're a home team. When you're talking about the the ultimate game, you're playing that at home with what's going to be presumably be eighty percent Rams fans. You know, it's L.A. That's not exactly. Uh, that's not not so I mean, since he'll travel well, I, sure. I think no, no, that's what I mean. I, that's maybe maybe eighty is pushing it a little bit, but I mean, in general, because it's a home game, likely there's going to. You're be right. It's a home game. We more right. to the Rams, even though it's probably going to be yeah. fair weather because it's L.A. But whatever. So. Yep. We'll talk more about that next week. Um, let's go ahead, wrap things up with a, a three and out, which, again, we like to close the shows out with. It is an anything goes out of left field, rhetorically not literally out of left field. It doesn't have to be baseball, but anything off the beaten path, first down, I'm going to let you take first down because that's the kind of guy I am. Appreciate that. Um, I alluded to this earlier. Uh you know, life is just funny and, and and plays out in irony in sports all the time. And I'm sorry, I can't get away from it. The fact that the NFL is under siege right now with <laughs> Brian <laughs> Flores, the Art Rooney oh, rule, God. the Rooney yep. rule, and at the center of it, is a text from Bill Belichick to the wrong guy. Oh. The guy who gets up at the podium and says, you know, I don't pay attention to snap face and this and that. Pokes fun at its social media and technology. Throws a tablet any chance he gets. And he screws up something as simple as a can, text. Can we talk about, like, even Bill oh. Belichick should, should know how to put an initial, like the first letter of someone's last name, should be after the name Brian in He's his Rolodex, a, or his, con, his, his contact list. One of his sons is Brian. One of his sons is Brian. And to your point, he's probably got 17 Brian's in his phone. Right. And he has no idea oh, which one is which. <laughs> just quick. Like, how many times, what we don't know is how many times has he texted other people, meaning to be for his son? I got dinner tonight. Coach, nope. <laughs> Not me, coach. Yeah. I'm in Cincinnati tonight. Uh, yeah. oh, oh, damn it. He just goes down the list. Um that's yeah. my that's my first out. All right. Uh second down. This is un, not sports related at all. Um more of a PSA for you, Sunday answer, really for anyone out there. Okay. Uh it's tax season, right? We're in February, it's officially tax season. You're seeing all these commercials on TV about TurboTax, HR block, DIY, all this stuff. Trying to get you to tell, telling you essentially, hey, you don't need anybody to help you out. Get this software, get this. You can do it yourself. You are strong willed. You've got skills. You can do this. Screw that. I'm telling you the opposite. Go pay to have your taxes done. Don't deal with it yourself. Let a professional do it and sleep like a baby. 
don't mess with it. Please, I, I beg all of you just to leave it to the professionals. Don't ruin your life for trying to do your own taxes this season. That's it. Second down, I'm out. Well done. Uh, I, I do pay someone to do my taxes. I, I don't. Touche. Really Thank you very much. Up, yeah. So I, I am with you there. So third, third down for me is goodbye, Patrick Mahomes. And hopefully goodbye, Aaron Rodgers. And I'm speaking about, you know, commercial hell. Um, all these commercials with Aaron Rodgers this and Patrick Mahomes that, you know, my God, I, I'll take a break from those two. And, and you know, can, like, can we sign Von Miller up? For, It'll end State, for State Farm, Farm alone just for a while, you know, yeah. I, I mean, you know, for crying out loud, who, who's the guy that just did a, a potato chip commercial, the the cornerback for the Rams, Jalen Ramsey? I think he did one. Um, how about Joe Burrow? Like, the, that, get oh, that guy on, on some. He's going to be getting know, some, some deals this offseason, no doubt. Let's hope so. God bless. God rest your soul in terms of commercial hell. Goodbye, Aaron Rodgers, and goodbye, Patrick Mahomes. So glad that we don't have to watch you again until next September. No, especially in those red shirts. We're, we're, we're good. That's a good one. Love it. All right. That's three and out. Uh, I mean, at that point, we're, we're, we're pretty much going to roll out of here. Um, but before we go... Didn't get this earlier, but again, uh, real quick reminder, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, turn notifications on so you don't miss the show. Our audio is available on Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts, and pretty much anywhere else you get your podcasts as well. So if you're listening to us, please write and review. Uh, also, make sure you're following us on social. Again, two, the number two, Padres Pod on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, those Padres Podcasts on Facebook. Hit us up. Find us on social somewhere. Tell us what you want to hear about, what you want to talk about, especially this time of year. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. We got college basketball coming up. March Madness is around the corner. Hit us up. It's all part of the world takeover that is happening ever so slowly to the point that the world doesn't even know it's being taken over. But that's how we like it. We're creeping in. And before they know it, we're in charge. Incognito. Incognito. All right, we're back next week. We're going to take on, probably talk a little some more Celtics, Bruins. Definitely Super Bowl preview. Blackout talk. Who knows? We'll see if they make any headway there. It's almost nauseating to even think to talk about at this point. Um, maybe playing some other fun games. We didn't get to much this week, but maybe next week we'll, we'll bring back a little bit of fun on that end. But make sure you're back next week checking it out. On that note, that guy, Sundance Kid. Give, give me some double finger. Oh, yep. Uma Thurman, Pulp Fiction. Give me some double finger guns. Throw them up. There we go. Double finger guns, Sundance Kid. I'm Major J. We are the Dos Padres. Asa to Sueños. See you next week. We are out. Bring it out. Bring it out.